Hello, it's Christmas. Well, not yet, uh, but it's coming, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, hence the Christmas hat, getting into the festive spirit. Uh, and now we've, of course, dived into the winter episodes for The Wind and the Willows. Uh, we kicked off last week with Champion of the Green Bays. Um, so, we carry on now this week with Patient Toad from Series 2. Um, so, not particularly a Christmassy episode, but um, they are coming, don't worry. Um, so, this one, yeah, from Series 2 and uh, directed by Chris Taylor. Um, it's a great one, so let's get into it. Just press play if you want to sync with me right now. Okay, so like I say, Patient Toad from Series 2. Now this one, um, just on a personal note, I remember seeing this for the first time when it was repeated on Channel 5. And it's one of those ones where I wasn't there to watch it at the time. It's one where I set the record and pray nothing went wrong. <laughs> um, and um, I like it. It's it's you could say in some ways not a lot actually happens in it because um, it's a very simple idea of Toad um, basically catching a cold but thinking he's more ill than he is. Um, and uh, we don't have the weasels or any secondary characters. Just our our usual four, and a lot of it, of course, centres on Toad, as the title suggests. Um, and another funny thing is, I, I remember when I saw it listed in the Radio Times, um, it was listed without the, um, you know, just the, the colon there, so it's patient colon Toad, but it was just listed without the colon, so patient Toad. And I read it as, um, oh, he's, he's usually an impatient creature, or he can be impatient. <laughs> um, and um, so I thought it would be very different to what it was, and then I realised, obviously, oh, he's, he's a patient, he's, he's ill. Um, and as the narrator says here, it's just the right weather for animals to catch cold. And it beautifully transitions from that very cold, grey, um, sort of outdoor scenery to, um, to some beautiful animation of Toad, um, <laughs> done by Paul Berry. Uh, and you can kind of tell it's beautifully done. Uh, I've just realised actually his his costume there and um, the green uh, sort of blanket or towel that he's got around him um, still exists. Uh, they're in the archive, so um, the, the outfit was discovered recently in a, in a bag of, of extra costumes that weren't that I didn't look through before, and now um, oh, it's been found, which is great. Now, what I love about or what I admire about this opening scene is there's an awful lot of um, toes sort of snivelling, um, kind of David Jason do, is doing a really great impression of um, Toad with a, with a cold and uh, I, I guess he's holding his nose for, to get that effect. Um, and it's not a huge amount for Paul Berry the animator to go on so he's basically doing a lot of walking around Toad Hall and he's pausing looking at all of these, his ancestors, turn up a bit. And, um, and we don't often get this where he's actually taking in the, the paintings and statues around him. And we learn a little bit about Toad's ancestors really, or at least their names, we don't know how they're related. <laughs> now, I don't know if any um, other Die Have Hard fans there have kind of compared episodes where the ancestors and mentioned. I know that this one coming up in a moment here is mentioned in another episode. Samuel Roger Toad. Um, I think he was mentioned in Winter Horns, which of course is coming up at some point. Um, but uh, in that one, Toad refers to Samuel Roger Toad in, in a painting. And this one refers to him in a bust or stuff. And that painting there seems to move around Toad Hall a lot. You see it in various places. <laughs> Um, versatility toad. Versatility toad. And this quote always stood out for me, and especially because we see it actually carved into the statue. Well, we see it in the background in a moment. They all died so, you were the gods love all died young, and it's. <laughs> Isn't that lovely as well? The light that he's holding. Now that would have been had a wire, probably very carefully, going through toads costume there and kind of trailing behind him somewhere um, to like a, the control for it. I very doubt he had a 
doubt very much he had a battery pack on him. <laughs> so you can see what I mean about not an awful lot happening already. It's got a very slower than usual pace. Um, but I do admire it. He's walking as if he's ill. And that's Paul Berry really tapping into his, his emotional state, his condition. <laughs> Lovely close-ups there. And you, I like those touches of kind of seeing other toes. Like on the, I never noticed that in another episode. The edge of the, the banister there on the, on the staircase. The little carved toe that I would feel. Now this is interesting because he's in his library. But in later episodes his library is used much more as a set. And it's a, it's a different set. So this is a very early version of the library. It's just a corner, very generic set built from some generic walls really. It's got a lovely comb, right that homely feel to it. <laughs> now that book prop is interesting because the, the beautiful page turn on but the page of the text are actually um, suitably miniaturised, whereas if it's in the background, usually it's just cut up books. I think I mentioned before, it's you know, not, not scaled down. <laughs> Almost impossible to eradicate. Rapidly spreading out. So Toad basically is kind of based on what he's reading, he believes he's very ill. And you can blame him, you know, he's he's realised that the ancestors have died young. He's got no evidence though that they died of these things, which he alludes to later. But he rather than actually having an episode Maybe. based around a craze or anything like that. It's centred around Toad, but he actually believes he's very seriously ill. Oh. And when Toad. Ratty and Moore arrive, they, they kind of start to see him in this kind of, I don't know what you call it, a very early version of a wheelchair, I guess. But that would have been researched, I'm sure. Lever to help yourself along. I guess they would have been for the wealthy. Look here, Toad. We've been waiting to set off downriver for the best part of an hour. And I like how this, this balance is, is kept throughout between Ratty and Mole and Toad. And they're, they're kind of um, generally quite optimistic. They never believe he's the same, so apart from the very end, which of course we'll get to that. When Badger intervenes. <laughs> I love this shot of Ratty. Watch his smile here. How it goes down there. He's smiling and it just relaxes. And beautifully done. Um, and that again is the Allen key in the ear, you know, to get the, the cheeks coming up. And when Toast, there's a bit of a cold and Ratty just kind of, the lips just going down. So the smile turns into an almost relaxed, perplexed expression. <laughs> <laughs> now this is nice. I mean, this is going now to tap into typical tone. It's the first hint that he's not actually that ill. In a way, the, us, the audience, believe he's very ill until this point because he's already listing the breakfast he wants. And usually, of course, when you're very ill, you're not very um, peckish. <laughs> so he's, he's already dramatising this. He's, he's already kind of. Um, <laughs> he's, he's already kind of creating a performance, but the difference is he's not, you know, he's not kind of um, lying to them as such. You know, he enjoys being the centre of attention and that's why he's dramatising, but at the same time he does actually believe he's, he's, he's very ill. <laughs> The way the plates and everything are laid out there, it suggests that Ratty and Mole have haven't had anything, or barely anything. Um, they've just had a cup of tea. You can see the cups of tea in front of them. Teapot near Ratty there. But all these plates are filled all around Toad. And the bare table just going on. I love that, a touch of wind. <laughs> Toad's almost disgusted by that thought. That Mole even said that. <laughs> It's interesting how Ratty and Mole wanted to go for a picnic. Um, 
in winter. I mean, of course, you can go any time of year and you do get some nice weather in winter, but um, this is why this episode felt right to put at this point, you know, early, early winter, early frosts. Now, look at the makeup on Toad. He actually looks very ill, doesn't he? But, um, you know, the fact that it's all around his eyes, you know. Now, Ratty there, the way he's saying you're not that bad, he's being optimistic, but you kind of wonder whether he's, he genuinely believes he's not that bad, or he's trying to kind of um, cover up the fact that he might be actually quite concerned. Now, of course, the other animator on this is Andrea Lord, um, which is an interesting mix. It's not the usual team for, for Chris Taylor. Um, um, but by the time we got to Series 4, it was kind of firmly established in terms of the crews, but well, Series 3 rather, but this is Series 2, so it's still early days. So some of the animators sort of mixed up. So, yeah, unusually you've got Paul Berry and Andrea Lord working together uh, with Chris Taylor directing. Now, Andrea, of course, is a fine animator, or was a fine animator. She became a costume maker later on, as I said in previous episodes. And I always love that gentle glow on Badger, that lovely warm fire. But I do think if this was made today, um, it'd make it even warmer um, you know, around the surrounding. We've got very white walls that actually makes the environment feel colder. It'd be nice to have an orange glow on the walls. And And this is kind of typical as well, isn't it? I mean, Ratty and Mole going to Badger for advice. There's many episodes where that happens. Um, they need the voice of authority, the kind of final say, as it were. Um, and Badger's always the one to turn to for that. That's, that is his character, isn't it? That's, that's who Badger is. And um, I like the limited music in this one. You've got just the strings playing there. Um, which is very gently in the background. Now, I mentioned them um, briefly at the end of last week's review uh, that there was a song deleted from this um, called Toad's Laments. Now, I assume it would have been sung in the previous scene or before Badgers, uh, Badgers where Ratty Mole gathered around Toad and Toad starts singing because he refers to Ratty and Mole in the song, but not to Badger. Um, so I believe it would have been sung at his, you know, from his bed. Um, who knows why it was cut? You know, there were a few songs in series two, but that's just one of the ones that, that didn't make it through. Um, the others, of course, are When I'm a Millionaire from Bankruptcy, and also there was a song called Words from Overrun's Return, uh, which uh, is only a demo version it exists of that, and the instrumental one, which was used in the episode. So, But it's interesting that these little bits of history still exist. And, um, but David Jason recorded that song fully with an orchestra and everything. Um, and it's a very slow song, but it's um, yeah, beautifully done, very melancholy. <laughs> I like how Badger uh, never gets to the point. He'll sort of skim over and yeah, well, we know what he's thinking. But when the honest conquered toe, well. <laughs> Being the usual proud toad that he is. And all my ancestors died of it as well, you know. Really? <laughs> I didn't know your father had any medical books. Oh, yes. Now, already we now we've got a hint of the truth coming through. So, Badger usually knows everything and everything that Toad's father had. And the fact that, you know, he's saying, oh, I don't know, he had any medical books. Or he almost suggests, well, Toad's got something wrong. And Toad asking there for, do you bring any chocolates with you? So... More and more hints as the episode goes on that Toad isn't actually that ill. And we, the audience, be now begin to believe that he's, he's making all this up, or, or at least he's just, as like I said before, dramatising and exaggerating. <laughs> and then, see how those strings just continue? And this instrumental music we've heard in many episodes, but it's very fitting here. I noticed how they're always directed and go to so many other toes, transitions between paintings like that. It's a reminder of all his ancestors. Um, so it's a lovely kind of gentle 
feel that you know he is dying, but not kind of it echoes um, Badger's Remedy, which is actually a later episode when Mole's ill, but that is more serious because Mole is genuinely dying. They save him, of course. Um, so there's an interesting balance with this one of the sense that Toad is dying, but at the same time, it doesn't feel that serious. It's a very dark episode in terms of the way it's lit, where you don't go outdoors at all. Um, and all these shadows. And so, yeah, it's a rare episode where we're just indoors for the whole thing, really, apart from the very, very last shot. <laughs> now, what Badger's doing here is. He's almost meanly um, letting Ratty and Mole go on to believe that Toad is actually at death's door. Um, but Badger knows the truth. So he's, he's acting a bit here and being a bit unkind. He's delaying the reveal to Ratty and Mole, but he wants to reveal it all at once to Ratty, Mole and Toad and also us, the audience. But there's this very kind of... He speak, Badger speaks very severely when he says, I've seen the book. You know, he's listing the illnesses. <laughs> and Matty and Mole, otherwise, I mean, they they don't know what these things are either. But there is hope, Toad. Oh, something can be done. I love the way Mole hesitates there. Something can be that little hesi hesitation is like done. <laughs> Of course, Toad being proud again. I'm always brave. And then, of course, we get into the truth. He's not brave at all. And, of course, he's asking, why does he need to be brave? <laughs> like in the Monster of the Wild World, when he's the young to say, we know you're ever so brave because you told us you were. <laughs> Look at that. Great directing again. Uh, with the soundtrack and the zooming in. The, the, and that kind of the music there. There we go, so the fact that you said tomatoes, that's it, so... Tree, so, see the connection? So, of course, he's talking about vegetables and... Now, of course, Toad didn't realise because he's um, a bit confusing, though, because uh, if he, Badger's alluding that, you know, the books were in Latin, but, of course, Toad was reading from them the earlier, so maybe it was a mix of Latin and English and the other. Who knows? <laughs> so Ratty and Mole are kind of both relieved and a bit irritated that they, they were waiting on Toad and worrying all his time. And so it's a lovely kind of bouncy, sort of happy ending. And then, we, of course, we get the sound effect of Toad. We assume down the stairs or into some furniture or something. And then he ends up genuinely ill again. <laughs> Come from his cold to physically, or probably broken something, or sprained his ankle by the time. But the fact that they're all kind of leaving him and kind of <laughs> kind of giving him his come up and his badges severely ending with that line and his great quotes there. <laughs> so we we assume that you know they've gone on for a picnic. And look at the way they're dressed. You know, it doesn't suggest that it's terribly cold, but a bit chilly, is it? Um, but there we go. So, I do like that one. Uh, yeah, it's not one of my absolute favourites, but it's, it's, it is a good one. Certainly in terms of animation quality and direction, it's beautifully directed. Um, 
it's just slow moving, I guess, because it has to be. It's one of those episodes that, that's dealing with sort of illnesses and the thought of dying and all of that. And it's quite a dark episode in that sense, but because it's Toad, we can't take it too seriously. <laughs> Um, and that's the difference again between that and Badger's Remedy when Mo was ill. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, and apologies for being so slow with comments. Um, just busy, just busy as always. I am reading them, but I just and I want to give proper replies, but I'm just so busy. So please do keep them coming. I will get back to um, as many comments as I can. I'm really grateful for them. I want to get this discussion going. You know, I want to keep this up and um, when we finally get through all the episodes which will be by end of February into March um, well I'll see what I'll do next I've got some other ideas and um, but uh, yeah really grateful for all the subscriptions and comments so there we go so that rounds up patient patient toad that's speaker and the next episode ah there we go. Now, next week, we are getting into the Christmas episodes with the Yuletide Entertainment. Um, it felt right to put it next week. And in some ways, I was considering the week after, but um, this it, it just feels right because it's building up to Christmas. That's what it feels with that episode. And um, I will be looking at the extended version. So I'm sure most of you are aware that there was uh, a version that was originally five minutes longer. Uh, originally released on video Hello. that way as well, uh, but never released on DVD in the UK Hello. that way. It was released on DVD in the US as the full version, but we will be looking at that one next week. So, um, so, thanks very much as always, and um, I shall see you next week then for the Yuletide Entertainment. All the best, and wrap up warm. <laughs>